Hi everyone and welcome to this stream of uh, second quarter results 2019 uh, from Funcom. My name is Rui Kazais and I'm the CEO and with me is Stian. Good evening to you all. I'm Stian and I'm the CFO, Stian Dragset. So without further ado, we will take a look at what uh, this quarter brought us. So uh, the second quarter highlights are that uh, our EBITDA margin uh, is 49% and increasing cash position compared to Q1. Conan Exiles uh, has done quite well, continues to do quite well and shows how uh, strong games as a service uh, can perform. And we have a strong pipeline with internal games and published games that continues to uh, roll out and uh, strengthen the overall company. From a financial point of view, um, we have the Conan's face here to show us our strong Conan Exiles uh, results and Stian can talk a bit more about those. Absolutely. <clears throat> so we see um, second quarter is a strong quarter, uh, significantly better than first quarter in 2019. Uh, so both revenue and EBITDA are up by more than 50%. And actually on all uh, measures that are listed here, 2Q is better than first quarter uh, on EBIT, profit, uh, cash, equity, and we're still uh, debt free. Uh, as expected, second quarter in 2018 was even better, and that's because then <coughs> that's when we had the full launch of uh, Colon Exiles, mm. uh, which was a, a special quarter uh, for us. Yep. Uh, but now it's good to see that uh, part of uh, the broadening portfolio and still strong performance of Exiles, uh, we continue to do well. And just on the release uh, activity, we, we see the, the, what went into these numbers uh, are two DLCs on Exiles, uh, PlayStation Plus uh, monthly subscription, uh, the, the game of the month, uh, season pass, and a Steam free weekend. And we see those are very effectful and we plan to do many more of those. We're very happy about that. Uh, on Mutant, there was a reveal of Seed of Evil a DLC, whereas the actual release will be in the second, uh, so sorry, in the third quarter results. Yeah, so the numbers from that launch aren't here. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Mm. And then we had the Conan Unconquered uh, release, which is in uh, these numbers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if we move to the next slide, we see that the rolling EBITDA margin is still strong. It's 53%, which is very near the all-time high. Uh, and this 12-month rolling, that means it's it counts the four last quarters. And that means the very particularly strong quarter, second quarter of last year is now not part of these uh, four months, but still it's 53%. Uh, and um, yeah, which is a very high EBITDA margin. So, so we're happy about that. And we think that is an encourage, uh, encouraging sign both of uh, uh, the broadening portfolio and also of the games as a service uh, business model, which uh, we have for Con Exiles. And we have uh, no, not necessarily all other games, but, but it works very well uh, there. On the MMOs, we have it. And for Connexals, it was actually kind of a bit retrofitted on mm. some our, on our new uh, internal games. It yeah. will be designed for that uh, from the start, yeah. which, will, we, 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 which is certainly a very good advantage. Yeah, I can talk a bit about it when we get to the game side as well. So Yeah. And these uh, we usually show, it's uh, cash and debt, which uh, shows very favorable uh, development. So we're now at the stable around 20 million. It went up uh, this quarter uh, and debt has been uh, brought down to zero. And that is at the same time as we invest heavily into new games, mm. games launching in the future. Uh, so we invest mostly in our internal games, but also in the publishing games. So we have... Uh, two big internal games that we invest a lot in and yeah. we will get back to that. So in terms of the games uh, the themselves, um, starting with uh, um, uh, some of the MMOs, well, the, the MMOs that we've been running, Stian mentioned games as a service, the MMOs we've been running since um, 2001 with Enrique Ar Online were games as a service before games as a service was a, a term used by the industry. So we've been, we've been um, running those for a while and uh, they continue to be a good support of the business, small, of course, but a good support of the business where we do some events to keep the community engaged. Uh, Conan and Conquered uh, released during the quarter uh, at the end of May. 
it didn't uh, do particularly well. Uh, the the game uh, stumbled out the gate, and uh, both from the uh, player reception and from a sales point of view, it has uh, underperformed. Um, it we consider that the game has a core fun that is there, but that we did not manage to package uh, completely in the the way the players expected. Maybe they expected uh, more, uh, um, considering the the brand that was there, considering the the, the Funcom uh, being the, the the publisher behind it. Uh, we think there's a, the RTS space is is a very interesting space that we would like to explore more in. But of course, this is not the first game in that uh, in one of the sub genres of RTS. Really, it's not a classical RTS; it's survival strategy. Um, we are doing some updates to game and I've been doing updates based on the, the player feedback we've gotten to make the game better, uh, more engaging. Uh, uh, and we are doing an, another big free update uh, um, in, the, in the future, together with some repackaging from a sales uh, uh, and marketing point of view to try to capture more people to come into the game. Because we do think that there's a, um, a broad audience of people that will like the game, especially in co-op. If they give it a try, so we uh, we are uh, fixing things based on the player input and uh, putting together a more attractive proposition for for potential customers. Then uh, Seed of Evil, uh, the DLC for Mutant, launched after the quarter. We uh, started in Q2 with some pre-sale of the DLC. Um, and after the quarter is uh, beginning of August is when it uh, came out. It came out on uh, PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch with Switch having the game being released there for the first time. So it's the first time we release the game on Switch. Uh, a lot of good learning experience from putting the Mutant over there. Uh, we also had the Mutant going on retail, so you can go to a store and get a, a retail copy of uh, Mutant with the DLC. And we see that uh, um, uh, there were some hiccups with the Switch version when it launched, uh, where the, the patch wasn't there that really improved the, the graphical quality. We think the game plays very well on Switch. Uh, it is a challenge. We've been, we've learned the hard way to get a game working uh, to the right level of visual quality and performance on Switch. It's a, it's a not the, not the strongest platforms. Uh, let's put it that way. Uh, so we're we're learning a lot of that for future games. But I have to say that I think the game plays very well with a controller in any any uh, setting. But it plays quite well on the go uh, with Switch, and uh, I think it'll be actually pretty good all things con uh, considered. So that's uh, uh, that's after the quarter. So the results on that of that will be in um, in Q3. We also were with Mutant just now. It just ended a uh, free week on uh, Epic Store, where we got a lot of players to come in and get the game for free, and hopefully buy the DLC that was available there for for sale as well. And we've done a lot of this uh, engaging of uh, uh, subscription services and uh, other packs because we feel this game has, um, has been well received and uh, a lot of players that are a bit um, skeptical to try it out will then try it if it's part of a subscription and now there's a DLC they can purchase if they like it. Um, yeah. Um, Conan Exiles continues to be our biggest activity in a quarter. We um, uh, released two DLCs and the, the, the year two season pass. The Conan Exiles Treasures of Turan pack is a cosmetic DLC pack what we consider a core uh, DLC. And Riddle of Steel was a, a smaller um, Arnold movie, Conan Arnold movie themed DLC that was more of a, a, a fan service for fans of the, the original movie. So there's a, you can get your own statue of Arnold in uh, different materials, different metals or in stone uh, in game, uh, more for the, the, the fans of the movie, a small little thing with it on the side. The DLCs have been performing uh, very well, including the season pass. The game, as everyone knows, is a Conan Barbarian game, open world online multiplayer, uh, made in uh, the, by the Funcom Oslo team, and it's a premium with DLC uh, business model. There are three new DLCs coming this year. Bod and Sand comes uh, very soon, it will be the first one. Then it's the Botcheries of Derketo, Der and finally Riders of Iboria. These three DLCs are part of the year two season pass. And uh, we have plans to do uh, continue developing exciting things um, for next year as well. There are some very exciting ideas floating around in the team. That um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's good to see that the amount of things that we we can still do and will continue to do on Conan Exiles, including 
uh, large amount of bug fixes, exploit fixes, and uh, quality of life fixes to the, based on players' feedback. Um, we've talked before that we were making a Dune open world uh, survival, um, multiplayer survival game. Um, so n nothing here is uh, really news. Uh, we have a nice picture of a dune in the background that is in no way indicative of what the game will look like. It's just uh, for inspiration. Um, we will uh, we coordinate very closely with Legendary on uh, the, the marketing and the PR and any material. So uh, with their movie coming in December next year, uh, we, we are making sure that uh, by the time we have things to show, they have been showing things as well and we all build on, e uh, on each product. So uh, it uses Frank Herbert's Dune. It's in pre-production. The timeline is still to be announced. It's made in Oslo uh, by a uh, part of the team that uh, worked on Conan Exiles, but also by um, uh, additional st uh, staffing employees that we've been hiring both for Conan Exiles and for this project. And the game is premium with game as a service. And this is important to say here that Conan Exiles, uh, we launched it uh, um, and we thought it would be more a game as a product but the players clearly want to, uh, more of a service and they don't mind to supporting the game through the LCs as long as we continue to update the game and service the game and all that. Uh, for the, the Dune game, we want to launch from, from day one with a better support for it to be a game as a service with a lot of the things that we know how to do from the MMOs but that we uh, didn't manage to do for Conan Exiles because when we made Conan Exiles, it was a difficult situation and we need to, needed to get the game out as soon as possible. Uh, with Dune, we're going to do it right. Bigger and better and awesome. Um, is that, does that sound exciting enough? Because I'm excited about it, but uh, it's hard to be excited and not showing anything, <laughs> right? So it's like, yeah. yeah. But it's, uh, it's still a ways out. We're in pre-production and uh, that's the status. Um, in our US studio, we're working on a co-op shooter. That's also something we've uh, said before. It's a multiplayer co-op shooter. Uh, it's in production. Timeline is next year, uh, and it's a, a premium uh, game as a service because that's what we do, uh, and that's our core competence. Premium games as a service is uh, what Funcom has done very successfully for many years. Uh, one thing that we haven't uh, said, uh, said clearly before, uh, it's been alluded to, but uh, we're saying now is that it's Mutant Chronicles IP or uh, somewhere within that, that IP. And uh, um, the, the image you see here is inspiration. It is not necessarily representative of any gameplay, but uh, um, I just wanted to say that Mutant Chronicles is a, a great little IP that uh, more people than I expected know about. There were Mutant Chronicles um, um, tabletop uh, war game. There was a Siege of the Citadel board game. There was a Doom Trooper collectible card game. And uh, there were other products and still are other products out there. So we think it's an IP that uh, fits gaming very well uh, that we are developing this co-op shooter in. And then on publishing and other games, Moons of Madness uh, coming out for Halloween this year, PC, Xbox One, PlayStation. Um, it's in uh, obviously in full production, um, single player puzzle horror. Uh, it's been very well received by players and press at, uh, at uh, uh, E3 and at Gamescom. So we're quite excited about it. We want to make sure that uh, the quality is high to not disappoint the players and, and press, especially players. Um, uh, so, of course, we're taking all the learnings from Conan and Conquered uh, and uh, all, all, uh, evaluating better how and when is a game ready to launch and making sure that what put out there is of the quality that the players expect and deserve uh, when they buy a game. Um, Conan Chop Chop, we put out a press release today uh, saying that we've delayed the game to uh, Q1. But we delayed the game for the right reason. Um, uh, we would delay the game because feedback has been very positive. Uh, but everyone asks, I want online multiplayer. How come you don't have online multiplayer? And we consider it a lot if we should add online multiplayer after launch. Um, it was something that uh, for a, a small little fun game, we thought, you know, maybe it's not needed. Maybe people will just play couch co-op. But after the feedback we got, we said, you know what, let's we can uh, spend a few more months and uh, do a good online multiplayer support. Uh, people are expecting it. It's a small uh, game anyway, uh, but it's really fun. It, the effect will be better if it's there at launch than if it comes in a patch afterwards. So we're doing that. The game is looking better and better every time I play a build, so that's uh, really good. 
And we have two other unannounced uh, publishing projects in the pipeline that we'll talk about at some point in the future for a total of 12 active projects, active being project we spend time and money and people on. Um, so yes, so six new and six existing game projects. Um, in terms of prioritization, you might have noticed that the Conan single player game is not in this list. That is because we did a um, uh, we've been working on that game and uh, the team uh, made a vertical slice version of the game that was quite good. But we saw that what was supposed to be a game um, that uh, fit a gap in the timelines between Conan Exiles and the Dune game and things like that, uh, for us to really deliver on the quality that a game like that uh, deserves to reach its full potential, we need more time, um, uh, maybe a bit bigger team. And uh, uh, we believe that that game needs to be made. I believe that game needs to be made. I want to play it. Uh, but from a, a, a strategic point of view and a company priorities point of view, it makes more sense now to put uh, take that team and uh, um, make them help Conan Exiles that is still doing very well for, for us and we have good things to do and Dune as they have the biggest potential. And then when there's another uh, gap in the calendar, we in the timeline, we have a much better idea of what it will take to make a game like uh, we, we were thinking. So that project for now is on hold. We really see the <coughs> big potential for, for the company and uh, for, for investors in uh, the games that we are focusing on now with um, Conexiles already doing very well with mm. the open world mm. doing uh, with the Dune open world do it right this time mm. from the start, w w which we didn't have the opportunity to yeah. with Exiles because of the financial situation at the time. If you get the right from the start, a very big upside, so we want to bring that as soon as possible and put the resources, resources required to do it uh, properly. Uh, and and, and the... we want to do that with a single player game as well, because the the um, we don't want to 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 squeeze the, the the games out. We want to give them the attention they deserve. Um, and the single player game, you might think, oh, that's that's a lot easier because it's single player. Well, you know, in a single player game, the quality uh, bar is very high because the other games that are single player are, are very big budget. So we, we need to make sure that uh, it's not just a so-so game. We don't want the game to be meh. We want the game to be really good. So it needs more time. It needs to be done not in a rush. It needs to be done properly. And um, uh, the best thing is to not chew too much more than you can buy it because uh, then, well, you choke i don't know i don't know what happens um <laughs> the bad bad comparison anyway i think the this is the the, the right decision we've learned uh, a lot when uh, taking uh, the steps to make that conan single player game we've also learned about our limits of what we we were able to do uh, with our team and with the the uh, resources available so it's a very good learning for the future indeed and, and it, then... the vertical slice actually looks great so, yeah, uh, that's a great game. It's but no, just, we're not going uh, to show you. We, we, we have to show you. It's a vertical prioritize. And now is the time for the big uh, multiplayer games, open world games in Oslo, and yep. then co-op shooter in the US office. Yep. Yeah, a bit on strategy. We This is more a repetition from before. Yeah, we've covered this in the past, so we're still on the same strategy where we do a lot more releases than in previous times. We do have more revenue streams both from uh, internal and uh, published games from uh, ip and the back catalog which is increasing uh, that, that's uh, with the portfolio broadening yep. i think uh, in, in terms of, of time we move on uh, and at the same time as we've uh, broadened the portfolio games we've done the same with the ip so we're very excited about having Coleman that we use for several games and also Dune that we will use for several games and our own IPs that we've created ourselves down in the bottom right of this uh, chart. And Mutant and a host of other IPs that fit gaming very well in yeah. the joint operation we have with, uh, with the cabinet. So in summary, we have solid financials. Um, Q2 was better than Q1. Uh, our portfolio is broadening with uh, more games in the pipeline and games that enter back catalog phase. And we have strong IPs for games. So, you know, what we ask of you is to join us on this journey and uh, help us uh, make great games and give the players and these IPs the, the games they, they deserve. And uh, yeah, 
Uh, we forgot to say the usual that please send questions to investor at funcom.com. Uh, I know people have been putting questions in the chat, so we can maybe take a look at those. Yeah, let's uh, go on to the Q&A. Um, let's see. Now maybe we can put it into our faces instead of being on the slide. Or do we want our faces? I don't <laughs> want our faces. Um, so there's one mm, question about info on co-op uh, shooter. Yeah, so... Um, you know, the answer is the answer you don't want to hear, which is uh, we will reveal when the marketing team feels it's the right time to reveal. Uh, <laughs> we will, uh, the, the, the reveal of a game is an important game beat to generate attention with press and with players. So uh, we want to make sure that when we reveal a game, we have uh, the material, uh, all the material needed at the right time. So uh, it's on the marketing team, not on our side. So until then, uh, we won't say anything. Um, there's a question about uh, um, our stock and how uh, some of the patterns there um, and that considering other options uh, instead of the also stock and change could be a driver of shareholder value. Um, we have we have said in the past as well that we have looked at other options and we are looking at other options. Uh, we, we take it very seriously to have a, a good home for the, the stock, of course. Um, the, we've been in the Oslo Stock Exchange since we listed in 2005 uh, and we are still the only uh, gaming company with what we do. There's another small uh, gaming company um, making mobile games in the listed, but it's only two companies in total and quite different. Um, in terms of the, the patterns uh, that might or might not be on our, on our, on our share, you know, if there was a lot more volume, those patterns would probably be different. So volume would be a good thing to have. And uh, guess who can make lots of volume? You guys can just go and buy and create volume. I should say that, right? Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's uh, we take it very seriously. It is something we are looking at, both the current situation and uh, other options. Uh, but it's uh, none of that. Those are, are things that happen quickly anyway. And uh, as you might have noticed, we've converted from Funcom NV to Funcom SE, an European society. One of the big advantages is that that allows us to relocate the head of the group the, the Pancom SE entity to member states uh, in um, uh, Euro the Europe. Uh, so that makes it much easier to uh, reorganize the group in a different manner that might be beneficial. Hmm. So it's easier to simplify the structure, for instance, by moving it to, uh, to Norway. And it's also easier to move to new countries if we were to do that at uh, some point. Uh, and we also, as um, part of an ongoing relationship with Oslo Stock Exchange, we also are in close cooperation with them uh, about that they secure to any time and they, they look at the trading in our uh, share uh, mm. stock and uh, they are closely monitoring that. And if something irregular or unusual would happen, they flag that to yep. the appropriate uh, instances to Öko Krim or Finansiv So yeah. uh, we're, we're always in close um, cooperation with the, with the relevant instances to secure that we have a good listing. Uh, and we were aware that uh, Stockholm has some advantages in terms of more gaming pairs. Uh, and that's uh, something that, uh, that, that we keep discussing uh, both mm. uh, internally in management and, uh, and with the board. Um, there's a question regarding acquisition strategy. Um, it would be nice to know whether IP acquisition is likely. Well, um, we, we are on, on the lookout for uh, interesting additions, um, but you know, there's nothing we can talk about. It's, uh, we don't have a, a, a clear, defined acquisition uh, uh, strategy or M&A strategy, but uh, it is something that we, we do look at and we do see what's uh, uh, available that is within our capacity and that fit naturally into into the, into the group or boost the group in a different way. I mean, do, do you see the benefits of uh, the <coughs> acquisition of Conan and those uh, IPs? Uh, that is already proven to be uh, to be uh, very attractive. So, so, so we do definitely like the concept and we look for other potential opportunities to do the same. But as which is natural with the MA, we don't communicate before we have anything firm. I'm smiling because I saw uh, 
There's uh, quite a few questions, uh, or a few questions uh, about uh, is there a relationship between Funcom and uh, the Outsiders and David Goldfarb? Um, uh, we talked to many partners and many development studios about potentially doing things together. Um, it's funny that uh, they saw a picture of him with uh, holding the Conan sword, and now think they think we are doing things together. It's a uh, uh, <laughs> um, just because you see uh, a picture of someone in a Funcom uh, studio doesn't mean that we are doing something together. But it also doesn't mean that we are not. So it's just normal business. We talk to people. Uh, we were at Gamescom last week and had, uh, I don't know how many, meetings nonstop with all kinds of people. That doesn't mean that we are doing uh, business with all of them. But of course, we do biz dev and we network and we try to look for uh, great developers to, to work with. Um, you know, there, if, if there's something more to say, we'll say it when the time is right. Um, on the Conan single player game, uh, there's a question if it will be restarted later. Yes, it is on hold with a goal to pick it up again um, later in, you know, uh, a year or two or something. Another question on single player, was it based on difficulties recruiting enough people or is it simply a change of priority? It is a change of priority. Um, recruiting people is slow um, uh, in every country for different reasons. In Oslo, there isn't a very strong um, uh, game development community compared to other cities. So it, uh, we need to recruit a lot from abroad and that takes time and, and, and all that. Uh, and not everyone wants to uh, move to to Norway because it's not uh, sunny Caribbean or uh, it's it's the snowy mountain thing. Um, I'm here, so I shouldn't talk about it. But uh, we see that every different loc every location has different challenges. Uh, locations that have a lot of gaming studios, like our North Carolina location, then there's more competition between the companies. Uh, locations with less. Uh, competition like Oslo, then we need to take people from outside. But that was not the reason for uh, the Conan single player game being put on hold. Um, question on Dune. Uh, do we believe that Dune is an old movie title that will be able to attract younger audience in large? Absolutely. Uh, I think what Legendary is planning to do with Dune is incredibly exciting. And um, uh, I think that they will attract uh, a lot of people that uh, want sci-fi and uh, maybe want more, want better sci-fi than some other uh, uh, sci-fi that is very big by a very big company now. Um, uh, so yes, I, I do have a firm belief in what Legendary is doing with the, the IP, um, and they're they're really partnering or uh, partnering up with. Uh, companies in all sectors to not just be uh, movies but uh, there was a new a remake of an old dune board game that was just launched we're making games with them they have other activities going on so um, I do think so that it will the answer is yes will it attract young, younger audience as well yes was that all yeah did we miss anything try to keep these uh, sessions to 30 minutes yeah, and so today right it looks like we succeeded if there are any follow-up questions, please email us to uh, investor at funcom.com. And um, if not, uh, we'll see you in around three months. Indeed. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Thank you.